Hi guys, it's Miss Judy. I'm here with our family tree for KFOT week 11. So the last couple weeks we've talked about David. Here's a leaf for David right here. So when David was a kid, he found out that he would one day be the king of Israel. And when David was a teenager, he fought and won against Goliath. When David was 30 years old, he became king. Now David wasn't perfect, but David was known as someone who loved God. David was also, besides being king, David was also known for being a musician and many of the Psalms in the Bible are thought to be written by King David. Another very important thing about David is that David is an ancestor of Jesus. In the New Testament, we're given a list of the ancestors of Jesus and King David is on that list. Now King David was king for 40 years. And when the time came for the next king, David's son Solomon became the next king of Israel. Here's his leaf right up here. So King Solomon was especially known for two things. Solomon was known for being wise. Wise is a special kind of smart. It's not just knowing lots of things, but wise is when you know a lot of things and you have experience and especially someone who is wise has good judgment. They can take what they know and make good decisions with what they know. And so Solomon was especially known for being wise. Another thing that Simon, <laughs> another thing that King Solomon is known for is building the temple. Now, do you remember when we talked about Samuel? When Samuel was a kid, he went to live with Eli to learn to become a priest. And Eli and Samuel lived in the tabernacle. The tabernacle was the place where they worshiped God, but it was a special kind of tent. So the tabernacle wasn't a permanent building. It was a special kind of tent. So while David was king, they still worshiped in the tabernacle. But when Solomon was king, he built the temple. He built the temple a special way for worshiping God. And it was more of a permanent building than the tabernacle had been. Now, Solomon's temple didn't last until Jesus' time. But the temple that Jesus visited, all the times that we've learned about, like when Jesus was 12 and he went to the temple, or when J Jesus went to the temple during Holy Week, the temple that Jesus visited was built in the same manner and in the same place as Solomon's temple. So Solomon is known for being wise and for building the first temple. Now we have some church family with something to share with you. Hi, church family. Jonathan Horges here. The Lord of the Rings are my favorite books. And when these books were made into movies, I thought it was really neat how they used really an old technique called forced perspective to make actors who are the same height look different sizes. Now this is important for the Lord of the Rings because a lot of the characters are hobbits who are only about three and a half feet tall 
and the actors that they chose to play the hobbits were at least two feet taller than that. Now forced perspective is about making familiar objects look different sizes by placing them closer or farther away from the camera so that things closer to the camera look big and things farther away from the camera look small. Well, I thought it'd be fun to try that out for myself. Hi guys, it's me, regular size, with my daughter Joan, who is uh, about that tall. And Joni is going to do something really pretty amazing. She is going to go away and transform and come back as a hobbit. So just watch. And here she is again, not as a hobbit. I, I said hobbit, hobbit. Go, go. Sorry. And here she is again, hobbit size. Hi, hobbit Joni. Good job. Cool, huh? Here's my boot. My normal size boot. But there's something strange going on. There's a little person in my boot. Let's take a quick look behind the scenes to see how Joni became a giant, and then a hobbit, and how Jeremiah fit in my boot. A really important part of both of these effects was having the camera on the ground and tilted up just a little bit. When we look at footage from a higher perspective, we can see what was really happening. Joni started out at the same distance from the camera as me. She then moved off the shot and came back close to the camera and looked big like a giant. She then moved off the shot again, but came back far away from the camera and looked small, like a hobbit. You'll also notice that we didn't actually look at each other, but looked where we imagined we would need to look if the person were right next to us. For the tiny person in the boot, it was important to have the boot close to the camera and the camera low enough so that you couldn't see inside the boot. Having the boot close to the camera made it take up a lot of the picture, so that Jeremiah, who was far away from the camera, could be hidden behind the boot when crouched down, but visible above the boot opening when he stood up. I hope you enjoyed these examples of forced perspective, and that they inspire you to try some yourself. So that's all from regular size me, and hobbit size me. Bye, church family. Isn't it nice to hear from our church family? Thank you to Mr. Jonathan for sharing with us about his favorite book. And thank you to Mr. Jonathan and to Joni and Jeremiah for sharing those fun examples of forced perspective. So I kind of have two questions this week. The first question is, what's your favorite book? You can answer in the comments here on YouTube, or you can answer in the comments over on Facebook, or you can email your favorite book to me and I'll add it to the comments over on Facebook. So that's my first question. And then we have sort of a bonus question. Have you ever tried any forced perspective or any sort of trick photos? Are you inspired to try after watching that video? If you have some examples of trick photos or forced perspective, that you've done, you can share those photos over in Facebook, the Facebook comments. So share your favorite book, the title of your favorite book, and if you have any examples of trick photography that you've done. Take care, guys.